He sees every musical in every play He's on a first name basis with Liza May He's a great white gay on the great white way He's Broadway's own Kenny K That's entertainment. Kenny Kleiber Frank DeCaro, how you? Are brought you? a cast of thousands with you Thousands Well, two Well, okay, and only one of them's actually in the cast so, I know. <laughs> hey. know But our cast oh. Yeah, so, well, well, the playwright yeah. counts the playwright counts. Right. At the yeah. end, they go author, author. You know, but anyway, oh, that's right. That's right, good. So wait, now before we get to their show, well, I just wanted to mention you really wanted quickly to mention that this. last night I went to see the eighty-minute play of Jonathan Franzen's House for Sale, and it was just about eighty minutes too long. <laughs> so if you can <laughs> get the clue, you're yeah, good that you got that in there. That I'm was good because he said I have know, to talk about this one. I have to mention the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, so wait, was which that. was more fun, House for Sale or Cat Bounce? <laughs> okay, which was better? Cat, cat bounce. bounce. Okay, thank you. Cat bounce, definitely. And I don't even know what it is, but it's better. It's it's yeah. cats bouncing on a screen. Then much better. 80 minutes of cats <laughs> bouncing on a screen is heaven. No, I'm sure somebody somebody will like this. So, so anyway, uh, but that being said, uh, there's actually a much, uh, well, in my opinion, a much better show playing in the off-Broadway. No, it's when you don't like it, it's in your opinion. And when it's better, it's just better. Oh, it's just better. Yeah, you oh, just say it's better. How it works? Say a much better show for you to go and a see. Much better show for you to go and see, and it's actually pretty linear too. Is the austerity of hope, and the playwright is here. The playwright Dan Fingerman, is hello, here. and one of the stars, Max Reiser. Hi guys, there you go. Hi. Hi. So, uh, so I decided I like the show so much. I decided to bring the boys with me today. So tell us, well, let, we'll go, let's ask Dan. Yeah. Dan, what's the? Tell us about the austerity of hope. Well, the austerity of hope is a it's a new play that is playing at the uh, June Havoc. What it is is it's about young gay people before the 2008 election and then after the 2008 election, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's something I've been working on for quite some time, and uh, it's it's really just sort of a story that I wanted to write about young people, my generation, and a gay play, you know, that deals with real issues. Are we talking yeah. people in their twenties or thirties? Uh, well, I think when we first started doing it, they were in their twenties. But a few people are now <laughs> a little in their thirties. Hey. But it's twenties, thirties. <laughs> okay. That's such an important time in a person's life. Definitely, it really is, and especially in these trying political times. That's true. Because yeah, because it's all there's a whole lot. Well, it's called the austerity of hope, but there's a whole lot of hope in this play, which I like. And uh, many things are so bleak, and it's nice to see something where you actually leave it going. Oh, you know what? I think things might just be okay. Maybe that's the impression yes. you'll get. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so so uh, and one how, of the oh, oh sorry, I was going to ask, how did it go? At it was premiered at the Fresh Fruit Festival last yeah, year. It's actually funny. We were at uh, so I started writing this play, and we sent it to a bunch of festivals and a few organizations, and they all passed on it. And then this sort of like last try, if we're going to try to do this one more time, was with the Fresh Fruit Festival, and they picked up the show. It ran for four performances last um, June. It was a sellout. People really enjoyed it. People really related. And so we said, we're going to do this again. And now here we are with a 16 performance run. And I think there's 11 more to go. Yeah, that's great. And at the, at the June Havoc. Yes. So actually, it's funny. We're two floors down from where we were at the Fresh Fruit Festival because we were in the Bauer Group. <laughs> I just want so. to say the Fresh Fruit Festival. That was the reason I brought the <laughs> We bar. love the Fresh Fruit <laughs> Festival. I like that name. I just And we had a friend who was really drunk trying to get in. Uh, he was drunk one night. And people were like, what are you doing? He said, he said, uh, I hope there's fresh fruit. So that's what we've been saying for years now. I hope there's fresh fruit. He was hope. What he meant was, I hope my show gets into the Fresh Fruit Festival. I bet. But he was so hammered that he said, I hope there's fresh fruit. And you know, we <laughs> so won a Fresh Fruit him. Award, which is a fruity. We have two fruities. <laughs> really? And one of them is Max Reiser, who's here, who was the best actor. Yes. You have a fruity. I have a fruity. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Who's, your, who's your character, Max? Uh, my character, Simon Green. Uh, he starts off the play being a real... A real uh, hard character to love, but through some circumstances in the election and, and what transpires over the couple of years, uh, he turns out to be quite a good guy. So it's quite fun to play the arc of Simon Green. So he star- he's a dick when he starts. He's out. a total dick. Okay. I didn't know if I could say that. <laughs> you yeah, can say anything, yes. We to say. We can- Fruity, yes, dick. No. no, you can say anything you want. You but know, you, know, you know what's interesting about Max's character, though, is that he's... Like they said, he's pretty much a dick, but strangely is the most kind of one of the most one of the most honest people in the show. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's just kind of shooting from the hip, and it's it's kind of weird that this dick can kind of be sort of a voice of reason. Sometimes right, right, right. Well. No, he definitely calls it as he sees it, and I don't think he ever means to be a total dick. He just you know <laughs> goes for the truth, whatever whatever consequence that may have. 
Right. Now, was, did were you with the show back in the the day with the Fresh Fruit Festival? Yes, I was. Yeah, because you won the award, the fruity. So fruity. wait, the fruity. So wait, so but so from even before that, I mean, were you from the workshops and all whatever and everything? Well, the first How production you... was at the Fresh Fruit Festival. So. Okay. But Max was, is an original. He yeah. is an original. Okay, so it was. Oh, he was always part of. Did you write it? You didn't write it for him, though. Did no, you? no, no. And we actually, I actually worried a lot because Simon is such a complicated character, and you sort of have to have so many different elements to play Simon. And we saw a bunch of people when we were doing auditions, and I was like, no one is going to be able to play this role. And then Max came in, and it was just, oh my god, we need Max to do this. That I was nervous, like. What if he says no, you know, because he was so great at it. So, <laughs> Which character most reminds you, Dan, of you? Are you asking oh me or are you asking my mother? I'm asking you. No. <laughs> um, you know, there's a bunch of me in a lot of, in a lot of the characters. Uh, some people think I'm Simon. Some people think that I'm Mike, who is uh, played wonderfully by Micah Speyer, who is a journalist in a relationship. Uh, there's pieces of me in all of it. I don't think... The show relates so much to people, and people come and see it, and they argue afterwards as to who they are. You know, I'm this character, I'm that character. And there's parts of me in, you know, all of them, parts of friends I know. But I love that people come to it and immediately walk out and say, you know, that was me, you know. So, and, and some- usually they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some interesting uh, topics in the show, too, which, you know, s- certain things will affect different people in different ways. And one of the ones that struck me as interesting is, you know, the whole gay marriage issue. And there's these two characters and one character is kind of fighting, like saying, well, you know, if gay, you know, when gay marriage becomes, you know, available to us and the, his partner's kind of like, well, whoever said I'd want to get married. And that's actually something that it happens a lot, I find, in gay relationships. One person's like so gung-ho about gay marriage, and the other person is like, what? What? I didn't, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? It's really, it, it does bring up a lot of questions, and it makes you actually question maybe what your feelings are on, the, you know, on certain gay issues. <laughs> and another interesting thing about it, too, is that if you're familiar with Astoria, this play pretty much takes place in and around Astoria, well... New York. That's where I met you, Ken. That's where I met you. In fact, I wonder which character's me. Okay, all of them. Yeah, all of them. (laughs) Yeah, there's a little bit of you in everyone. Actually, you know, it's an entire. It's like remember on Laugh and they had the Farkel family. Everybody had red hair. That's you. It's like like the Farkel family. Everyone in it. I don't know that of any of the characters though. The director at one point, I think I could disclose this. He told me that for about a second and a half, there was a thought he had of adding something that he saw after he was witnessing me at a party. Dan Gennaro, our our wonderful director, we took him to a party. um, Well, we'll give a shout out to Paul Nichols. Uh, we took him to Paul Nichols' party, and a bunch of people were, were taking off each other. They were kiddingly, drunkenly unbuttoning shirts. Ah, yes. And both the people who showed up, uh, both Dan and another friend showed up with button-down shirts. And I said, oh, I don't know if you should wear that. And then there we go. Yeah, I showed up with a button-down shirt. I mean, Dan just... said, I want to do the button-down shirt in the play, because Ken kept doing it to me. Because <laughs> I kept walking around, and people just kept... And they kept unbuttoning my shirt constantly. And I was like, come on. And well, did you show them that trick where you bite the buttons off their shirt? Because that's no, my favorite no, one. I love that. when you do that. That's always a good party but, game. But a guy at the party said to me, he's like, come on. You're at a party with just about all gay men and you're wearing a button-down shirt and you don't think that's going to happen? And I'm like, I wore the same shirt to interview Carol Channing. And she didn't do it. So she, what? She, she does. Co- she does cop a feel, though, as you leave. You've got to be <laughs> careful with Carol Channing about that. We, we are talking... <laughs> We do. We're talking to Kenny Kleiber. It's That's Kentertainment. We're also talking to the playwright, Dan Fingerman, whose show, The Austerity of Hope, is playing at the June Havoc Theater. And also to the actor, Max Reiser, who plays, uh, what's your character's name? Simon Green. Simon, Simon Green. Green. Okay. Now, Max, do you, I mean, uh, you you are and have been a model as well, and you've been in films. In fact, I think you have another film that... Aren't you trying to kickstart another film right now? Or no, I just what? I just produced and starred in a, my own film called Chaser, along with Sal Bardo. Okay, and what's that about? It's about bug chasing. It's a very controversial little gay film, but what? really good. Bug chasing? Bug chasing. Do you want to have to explain bug chasing? Yeah, I think Do so. I? It's, for no. people. it's for people who... Mosquitoes. That's and... exactly what it's about. Or, or, Fireflies. What, not or, what's ornithology? That's fish. What? No, what's, no, that's not another one. Never mind. No, bug people who want to get infected with AIDS so that they don't have... So basically, they think they're going to get it anyway, right? Am well, I, there's, a, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of reasons why people do it. Um, but yeah, people were purposely trying to contract the virus. Su- which is such a good idea. I didn't know no. it was called bug anyway, chasing. Anyway, we yeah, do not have that in our show, though. That no. is not no. in We do no, have no, Max no. Reiser without his shirt on. <laughs> but I was going to say, yeah, so I was say, yeah. Max has, is a model as well. And, I mean, do you feel comfortable being in front of a whole group of people every night where you're you, you're shirtless quite often? Which well, He's shirtless well, now. He, he, <laughs> put that back on, that was Max. a secret. <laughs> um, well, you know, I haven't modeled really in, in many years, so I'm not as fit as I used to be, but I do feel 
feel very comfortable being in my undies on stage. Uh, it's a really great cast. We have great chemistry. It was a little uncomfortable last night because my dad was in the audience. Oh. <laughs> but for the most part, uh, no, it's, I mean, it's fun, and I get to make out with a straight guy, so what more can I ask for, <laughs> really? That's we didn't really set out to sort of, you know, do the gratuitous nudity. It all sort of, and there is no full nudity, but it all makes sense. I mean, Ken can attest. Yeah, no, I the think show. there's very, very little sexual activity in the show, and it all very tastefully done. Yeah, but still, there are some topics, and th- there's some. I don't want to say language because that sounds like it's potty mouth speak. But there's some topics which. I wouldn't want my parents to come and hear me speak. It was very odd when my parents first came to see the show. And <laughs> oh, they, give me a topic. Well, it was funny because my parents kept saying, you know, oh, these people are coming or these people are. Marjan group is coming. All these people are coming. <laughs> and I kept getting terrified about it. And they would finally my mother said, what's the big deal? And I said, well, you know, here this is a show. They talk about blowjobs and all these things. And my mother just looked at me and she said, what? You think my friends don't give each other blowjobs? <laughs> so I shouldn't have just said that. I'm serious. Actually. No, that's good. And now, so that, that's good for a so, year, you know, a year talk- of therapy, maybe, yeah. maybe 18 months of Luckily, therapy. Luckily, she doesn't know how to, how to get serious XM. So. Okay, that's good. <laughs> no, no, I just meant, if I, I think if I'd heard my mother say blowjobs, that would have been the end of it. That no, but been, it's, it's a, a funny year. thing because a lot of people, you know, last night we had my elementary school teachers there. We had a bunch of people I went to high school with wow. and it, the, I used to get very nervous about it but you know yeah they do talk about adult issues and they do talk about sex and guys are ripping off each other's shirts and they're talking about rim jobs and things like that and yeah there is but I think people sort of see past that and they see that you know it's a show someone came up to me right after a middle aged woman and said you know, aside from the fact that it was two men, that relationship was ours. And I think that's like the most amazing thing. Yeah, that's all anybody can ask yeah. for is the that's, universality. That's what my dad said last night as well. He said that, you know, even though most of these are gay relationships, they're just like straight relationships. And that was nice to hear coming from my father. Yeah. And, and, and you, you held his hair while he was throwing up. So oh, absolutely. Fine. Literally, <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> you know, what, what I love about the show, too, is that I saw it last year and now I saw it this year again. Both times that there were people in the audience who were literally... They're hysterical. The audience has such severe, and I mean in a good way, severe reactions to the show. I mean, there. I mean, when I saw it the other day, there was some fella, an older gentleman, sitting towards the front of the theater who was like, ah, ah, like he was laughing, like it was really affecting him on that level. But there's also always going to be these people who are like, ah, ah. It's, it's like this shocked gasp that happens in several scenes, and, and I was happy to see it happen again this year, too, because last year there was a whole group of gals sitting behind me, and you would have thought that... They were just having a party back there. People really get yeah. affected by some of the things that happen in the show. <laughs> it's funny because in the beginning of the show, some people don't really laugh at some of the jokes that I think are funny. But like, welcome once, to my world. I know, <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? Why don't you laugh? But uh, as it goes on, you know, when we get into Act Two and even towards the end of Act One, people get really related to the characters that are in the show, and they really start to like. Things I don't even think are intentionally funny, they're laughing at. And I think that the characters are so relatable and they're directed so beautifully by Dan De Niro that, uh, and they're all such wonderful actors and actresses that people really, really get into it. And we love that. Yeah. Is it, wasn't that sweet? Is it sweet. tough to, to <laughs> mount, you should pardon the expression, uh, gay, <laughs> mount themed, ma- gay themed things, uh, you know, even in 2012? Um, I don't think. Not for the reasons that um, that one would expect. I don't think we're like you know being turned or turned down because it's a gay show. I think what I find more of a struggle is sort of you know oh you're doing a gay play whose dick is going to be out like you know if it's going to be at a certain at certain festivals like that kind of thing or is it going to be really cheesy? Is it going to be you know some of those TV shows that are out which are wonderful but where the characters are very caricatured. And whatnot, and these are really well developed characters and and really normal people, you know. A lot of them, you know, you know, relate to people because they're so. Do you guys, as younger gay guys, do you look at at gay men in their forties and fifties and and relate to them, or do they? Does it seem a little foreign when you see gay stuff? I mean, obviously, it's a very different, I think, um, experience. I was actually talking about this last night with a bunch of people that I grew up with. You know, I'm I'm just turned 30, and now in my high... Like, I, no one was out in my high school, and a bunch of people came last night, and many of them had come out, you know, after. We're talking about how now there's this sort of... People are out in high school, people... There's a gay club and whatnot, and I find that very foreign. And, I, and I, the way that I see that with them, I think, is the same between me and, you know, guys in their 40s and 50s. It's a, such a very different experience, but there's sort of that shared, you know, 
experience as well. I was talking to a group and I said that I, I said I came out when I was 16. And the kid said, this little kid raised his hand. He said, why did you wait so long? <laughs> wow. And, and it was yeah, – No rush. That was sh- it was shocking because it's sort of like I, I won the, the, the precocious award, you know, <laughs> at 16 in my high school practically. You know, it was like uh, – that was I, – I was shocked by the question, you know, I think it was. Max, what do you think about that, though? I mean, do you, do you relate to when you see what gay men in their 40s and 50s are doing or talking about? Yeah, well, about? I mean, I, I grew up in Europe, uh, mostly in Amsterdam, and I came out when I was 17. And I can honestly say I was the only out person in my high school and then even when i went to college in london i i was one of maybe three people that were out and it was you know um um musical and drama college so fairly surprising i i, I think was, so there were a lot of people in gay. is what you're saying <laughs> yes. yes okay yes. um yeah i mean i i think I, I think i have a similar opinion to what dan fingerman was saying that um you know by every decade there's a lot of changes but we all share a, a similarity um, so moves. I think it's all yeah. relatable. And older gay men seem to really love this show. Um, and, and, and can all, relate to it, yes? Yeah, oh, you know, it, it was fun. When we did the show last year, they were all arguing about gay marriage. And then the next day, someone I work with sent me an email and said, I related so much to your play. And by the way, we're getting married to the, the next day because it was right when um, gay marriage had passed. And he said, while I was in the... Um, while I was getting my wedding certificate at City Hall, I saw people that reminded me of the characters in your play, which I thought was so amazing. Aww. <laughs> hey, what else could you ask? For I know. Playwright? We're talking to Mr. Ken- you know what we could ask? Who we're talking to. We'll do that. Okay. We're talking to Kenny Kleiber. He is our uh, That's Ken Entertainment fellow. And we're also talking to the playwright, Dan Fingerman, of the new drama, The Austerity of Hope. And one of the stars, Max Reiser, is here with us as well. So it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I always... We were talking about the things you feel like you need to see represented in the whole, you know, what's the same and what's different and stuff. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, you know, I mean, I think we all strive to see some glimmer of recognition when you're sitting there. You want to be able to to get whether it's completely foreign to you. You know, it doesn't have to be it's, you know, white gay men in an upscale apartment doing whatever, you know, for you to relate to it. But you want to be able to, you know, to to relate to what you're seeing. Yeah. You know, I remember you, you said to me, Frank, once that one of – I mean the people that you had to look at growing up were kind of more flamboyant. Cause like Which you, was you, good you, for you me. You had to know that they're like Monty right, Rock yeah. or Paul Lind or people like that. Or who Charles Nelson so, Riley. Charles Nelson Riley. Alan Seuss. Yeah. I, but that was my personality. So it's like for me, the ones that people are like, I wanted to kill myself because this is all we had. And I was like, I love them, man. <laughs> I, they're my favorites. You yeah. know, I think it's, it would be – you know, you know there's a kid who, who was saying – to RuPaul, thank you, because, right. you know, or, or Jujube or whoever is younger. You know, I mean, it's that sense of, you know, somebody's out there and the, the one they're relating to is the drag queen or the flamboyant guy or the whatever. Right. But but, uh, but I guess we need we need every different kind of thing. Well, it's interesting now. Rainbow. Yeah, it's interesting to see stuff now that it's just here's some just of course, there's going to be all different types of people, but it's just here's some real people. They don't have to be the big old the big proclamation of I'm gay just by looking at them, you know, which I think I think is nice and really different as, as, as far as theater goes, too, because, I mean, sure, like in the 90s, you had Love, Valor, Compassion and, and things like that and Jeffrey. But really, there wasn't a whole lot. People were too afraid or it had to be in some little theater somewhere. Yeah, it was you, know? hidden. you had to go looking for stuff. It had to be hidden. It's, it's sort of <laughs> I, I wish uh, I think TV is catching up, but I still think TV is still trafficking and in, in very broad strokes which is kind of a drag you know i agree so yeah. i mean i wish you know i always said it's like everybody i know is as flamboyant as jack and as responsible as will you know so <laughs> it's sort of like why can't we get one character that's you know a complete screaming queen but also is like <laughs> you know of course they balance the checkbook you know it's like of course i can you know have a relationship or make a home or do you know whatever and also you know Put, put a dress on and run out and be a maniac when they need to as well. You know, Max, you said when you were pretty young when you when you came out and you mm-hmm. realized all this. Were there any people, in partic- any actors in particular that you looked up to when you were coming out? I mean, I'm not necessarily gay. I'm just always curious to know what young actors. You know, uh, well, you know, I've always been a fan of Ryan Gosling and Jake Gyllenhaal and James Franco, and I've always wanted their careers, and I'm happy for them to have the <laughs> careers they have. <laughs> And I've always thought they were beautiful. No, and aspire to be like a certain actor, and not not particularly. No, um, no one really spoke to you when you saw their movies. And went, oh, I'm gonna be like because you know every young actor's like, oh, De Niro. You know, what I mean, it's the the typical response. Well, I mean, my, New York. Yeah, my my dream role to play is Blanche Dubois. So I don't know how far that gets us. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, she's lovely. <laughs> you, you might have to buzz a little bit or something. Or, 
Yeah, or, Buzz. Well, you know, in the show, there's 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 mention of manscaping in the show. So <laughs> oh, that's, that's Blanche Dubois. Yeah. She was a big manscaper. Yes, yes was. Was. in the original. <laughs> no, I mean, in the austerity of hope, there's mention <laughs> oh, of manscaping. Blanche doesn't manscape, or Stanley, or whomever. But anyway. So, all who right. was the one who said I've always depended on the manscaping of strangers? <laughs> Wasn't that her? That, that, was, that was Max that was her. Her. Okay. <laughs> So Dan, is there is there something new you're working on now? Uh, not not exactly. I, I would like to write something, in a, another full length play, and I think it would. Well, I don't know. Am I allowed to say what I'm supposed to be doing? I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> what's, what's I am writing on another play. Well, you did such a great job. But you want to see more? I want to see. Yeah, more I, I think done. I think when Austerity of Hope is, is concludes its run, uh, I'm going to sleep for a very long time. But then after <laughs> that, I would like to do something um, possibly about AIDS, MTV, and the 1986 Mets set in New York. Well, that's pretty specific. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who are your influences? Um, you know, I guess the usuals, you know, Tony Kushner, you know, I love Tony Kushner's work. I really love Richard Nelson's work that he's doing down at the public with the uh, Apple trilogy where there's sort of, you know, um, these people who, yeah, there's the politics and yeah, there's a compelling story and they're merged together, which is what we're trying to do with Austerity of Hope. So it isn't this sort of play where we're hammering it over the heads and it's not just a drama. It's kind of both. So, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on the success Thank of the you. austerity of hope. We shall. $18 and tickets on Smart Ticks. Perfect. Smart what? Smart oh, Ticks. Oh, Ticks, Ticks, Ticks. Right. Anyway, Dan Fingerman, thank you for being here. And uh, Max Reiser, thank you as well. Thank you, and guys. W- websites we can send people to? Facebook.com slash austerity of hope. Behind the scenes pictures and all. And I think Max has his own website too, don't you? Maxriser.com. R-H. Without without pants.com is what it is. Max Riser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's some that. scandalous <laughs> photos out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there <are. laughs> Not that I looked. Oh, God. Uh, mm-hmm. oh. As long as you don't download, not here anyway. <laughs> Thanks, guys. When we return to the Frank Show, more fun here on Sirius XM Out Q108.